This is Nicholas Glover with the Tampa Bay Chamber. I want to thank and welcome our viewers tuning in to our 2023 candidate interview series for the City of Tampa City Council elections. The Chamber focuses on policy, not politics, and while we do not endorse, we do want to make sure that our members and the business community is informed on where these candidates stand on the issues most important to the business community. We are excited this morning to have Chairman Councilman Joseph Citro running for re-election City Council District 1 Citywide with us today. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Nick, for having me, and thank you very much, Chamber members, for allowing me to have this opportunity to talk with you about my campaign and about my role as chairman on Tampa City Council. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we are just under 60 days from Election Day, and now that we are in the final stretch, if you will, can you give us a brief update on your campaign uh, and what message you hope to deliver to voters in this final stretch? Well, my message, my main message is let's keep Tampa working. We have come to this point where now we've finally gotten what we wanted. We wanted to be that great city, and we have reached that, that point of being a major metropolitan. Now it's our turn, the city council and the mayor, our government, to make sure that we grow properly, make sure that we have smart growth. Excellent. Thank you for that. Let's talk about the role of city council. Um, how do you see the role of city council uh, from your vantage point, and ultimately, how do you see that evolving over the first uh, part of the uh, of your next term? Well, the, I know my role as a city council person. My role is legislative. We have two branches of government. We have the executive, which is the mayor, and the legislative, which is city council. We have we deal with ordinance, codes, resolutions. We deal with rezoning, with re, with building. Uh, and we can work in conjunction. We have a strong mayoral form of government. The mayor is the spokesperson for the city, and that mayor has a vision for the direction of the city. We help coordinate that vision so that we, again, will have smart growth that will make sure that our city is growing the proper way and that we're not overstepping ourselves and not putting growth before the residents that live here. Thank you. Now I wanna talk about something that's very important to the chamber, which is workforce housing. And uh, Mr. Chairman, the way that we think about that is the uh, area median income between 80 and 120%. I know that's important to, uh, to your colleagues on council as well. What zoning and policy changes, code enforcement uh, updates as well, would you want to support uh, to see um, changes to our workforce needs in Tampa? Well, as as you as you very well know, I uh, obtained ten million dollars for workforce housing, which we'll discuss that later on, uh, with five million dollars for the infrastructure of that workforce housing. Uh, I would like to see Tallahassee and City of Tampa and other communities come together and stop preemption on the cities, especially Tampa, the ability to um, demand that developers put in more workforce housing uh, uh, so that we can meet the needs. And the way I'm looking at it is we have people that drive into the city of Tampa to go to work. And those service industry people can't afford to live here. So they're spending money on car, maintenance, fuel, and parking in downtown Tampa. Uh, so if we could bring them closer, have more af affordable accessible workforce housing, then they can maybe eliminate their vehicle and be able to walk or take transit to their jobs here in downtown Tampa. Of course, we have the chicken and the egg, we have the yin and the yang, we have the cause and the effect. Uh, I'm hoping that something that we'll discuss later is transportation dollars that we already have uh, up in Tallahassee. But you see, everything revolves around one thing or another, workforce housing, density, transportation. It's, it's a really tough question to answer, Nicholas. So you actually hit on our next point. I'll uh, just circle back to make sure I get down um, your exact point on this, uh, which is related to preemption and home rule. Uh, I heard there a little bit of uh, frustration with Tallahassee, uh, but let's talk about kind of what you would do to establish a more productive relationship uh, with our legislative delegation. I'm also a board member of the Florida League of Cities. And our number one fight is for home rule. 
let's just talk about the clean energy resolution that I presented uh, to the citizens of Tampa and, the, and uh, the city of Tampa and our city council. Before we even got that out, there was 11 preemptions already written up in Tallahassee. Luis Vieira uh, had a uh, apprenticeship program before city council even took a vote on that. There was preemption bills on that. Look at our tree ordinance. People are, are expressing their, 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 their opinions on our tree canopy lowering when we have preemption from the state of Florida uh, on our, our tree ordinance that we have. Uh, the only thing I can ask is that our representatives sit and listen to the constituents, sit and listen to our city and our city council, and let's come to some sort of resolve. I, uh, I ask our current agricultural uh, uh, AG if he thought that the city of Tampa couldn't govern ourselves because there were so many preemptions. And he looked at me and said, well, it looks that way. So we have to change the mindset of Tallahassee. We have to change the mindset of the representatives that don't live in Tampa that go there. That Tampa is different from Miami. Tampa is different from Jacksonville. Tampa is different from Ocala. And we should be able to govern ourselves accordingly. Thank you for that. Uh, Chairman Citro, we talked about um, the role of uh, city council at the beginning of our conversation. And of course, approving the city's budget is one of council's greatest responsibilities. Uh, some state officials and uh, economic experts actually anticipate uh, additional slowdown uh, in the economy during your term. Uh, how would you prioritize city spending? Uh, I, as always, as I did at our last budget meeting, I'm going to ask for more staffing. Our city and our population is growing. We need to keep that ratio of uh, citizens, population to representatives, meaning uh, uh, police, fire, code enforcement, inspection, uh, uh, permitting. We need to keep that ratio uh, equal or, or, or as much to equal as we possibly can, you know, one to 1,000, so whatever. I'm always going to say we need more staffing, public safety, code enforcement, uh, uh, parks and recreation. That's where I want to focus our budget dollars on. So we're not, even if we go into some sort of downturn in the economy, we're still going to have the manpower or staffing uh, to make sure that our residents are taken care of. Thank you. The utilization of public-private partnerships continues to be an asset, as you know, for local governments uh, across the country. What opportunities for P3s do you see for the city of Tampa? Oh, goodness. Uh, I, I was hoping that there was going to be a public-private uh, transportation to and from the airport. There had been talks about that for a long, long time. Uh, I don't know if that's going to come to fruition. Something like that would, would really, really work. Uh, you know, uh, the Expressway Authority is, is looking at everything underneath to become parks and recreation. So they'll still have the property. Parks and Recreation will take over the liability, the staffing, and the maintenance and upkeep. We can have dog parks. We can have pickleball courts. We can have smaller uh, soccer fields for youth. Uh, Public-private is always, always, in my opinion, a great idea, and it, we have to explore that more. You alluded earlier to transportation, and of course, uh, uncertainty still persists with the already collected all for transportation referendum dollars. Uh, as you may know, the fate of those dollars rests in the hands of the Florida legislature. Assuming that Hillsborough County uh, and your colleagues on the Board of County Commissioners are able to secure those funds this legislative session, what are the most important transportation investments that you would like to see, Mr. Chairman? First, let me, let me say this. Uh, I have proposed a plan to use CRA dollars within the four CRAs that have the streetcar. Uh, Ybor City, Channel Side, Downtown, and Tampa Heights to extend the streetcar all the way up to Palm Avenue, which it had been planned, uh, using CRA dollars for the matching fund for that. I now realize that uh, that might be too rich of an ask from the CRA. Uh, so uh, Vic Bide, our mobility, and Ms. Beth Alden with TPO, we've come up with a plan that we can form a circulator with heart uh, using CRA dollars, use that as a pilot project, and in three years we can go back and look at the success of that and then propose extending the streetcar. I've also talked right now with uh, the incoming county commissioners. Wouldn't it be wonderful 
if both the county and the city could blend those dollars and repay every county road in the city of Tampa. Let's take a step back. Only 19% of the roads in the city of Tampa belong to the city of Tampa. The rest are county roads or state roads. Kennedy Boulevard, Armenia, West Shore, Bay Shore, Columbus Drive. Roads like that are in dire need of repaving. But those are county roads. I'd like to melt the two monies together so that we can get those done. Sidewalks around schools. State of Florida has handed down to the uh, county school board that if your child lives within two miles of a school, they cannot be bused. Excuse me, there won't be busing provided. We have areas of our city where there are no sidewalks. So our children have to walk in the street to get to school. I don't, I don't like that. So some of that money I would like to go see for uh, uh, sidewalks around schools or at least a pathway to school where they don't have to walk in the road. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have touched on several very important topics uh, today. Uh, but before we wrap up, is there a priority that you would like to discuss that we did not get to or something you want to circle back to reemphasize? Fire stations. Fire stations. We do not have an enough. Let me just take, for instance, downtown channel side area. If uh, station one is out, call, out at a call, if Davis Islands is out at a call, if uh, the one on third uh, on Kennedy Boulevard is out on a call, we're leaving the core of our downtown without fire response. Somebody's gonna have to be brought in, which means response time is gonna be hindered. Uh, there are areas of our town that firefighters, their systems, their, their navigation systems aren't working. They have to use their own cell phones or their own tablets to, to get to an address, to find the address. Uh, there is just some things that the fire department is lacking. I wanna make sure they have what they need, whether it be staffing, whether it be ambulances, whether it be cars, whether it be a fire station. Excuse me. We need more police officers. Public safety is a priority of mine. That's what I want to focus on. Again, we're having more and more and more people moving into the city. We should make sure that they're safe. Great. And finally, where can voters go to learn more about your campaign and the positions that are the most important to them? CitroForCouncil.com webpage. All other social media is Citro for Council, whether it be Twitter, whether it be Instagram, Citro for Council. That's all anybody has to remember. Thank you, Chairman Joseph Citro, uh, running for re-election District 1 citywide. On behalf of our members and our board of directors, I want to thank you for joining us today and for your willingness to serve in an elected office. That concludes our interview this morning. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you very much, uh, Chamber members. And please vote for Joseph Citro, City Council of District 1.